All right, today I want to talk to you about Cascade number nine, nighttime stretching AFOs. Um, now there's a few different types of night stretching AFOs available. This is one of them that's ordered quite frequently. So I just wanna go through instructions on this one and show you how um, we set them up and how they, I believe they should be used. So the way that these work is with these stretching straps that attach from up at the calf down to the toe. And one recent update they've made is adding these quick release uh, mechanisms here with this little red tab and this is a magnetic buckle which attaches right up here and then these straps are adjustable of course if you pull them through the buckle here it will change the angle the more it pulls on the toe it's going to increase the dorsiflexion um, depending on how tight you do those straps and so my usual program and really the biggest challenge with any nighttime AFO is number one making sure that it's going to be tolerable so that we're not pushing so hard that it's causing too much uh, discomfort and too much uh, issues with sleep or with pain with the patient and the second thing is making sure that you are though pushing hard enough so that you're doing some good and so what i suggest and the way i set these up is i um, put marks on these straps and if you look here on this uh, strap i've got a silver paint pen that i've used to put all these different hash marks and this is what I recommend that you have done, either do it yourself if your orthotist doesn't do it or try to get your orthotist to do it. But these hash marks then serve as a reference point for you to know how much tension you have created here with the strap. And then if it's time to increase it, you're gonna take and adjust the strap and pull it through the buckle here to the next hash mark, just like that, which just increases the angle at the foot just by a few degrees. It's not an exact science. It varies depending on the size of the foot and the leg with each one. But the idea is to use it as a reference point so that you know how much tension you've been using and then if you change it, what you're moving to. So each time you increase that tension and go to the next hash mark, you're, you're increasing the stretch on the foot by just a few more degrees. And so what we suggest doing is starting with a lower tension with a slightly um, less aggressive stretch to begin with to try to make sure that the patients are going to be comfortable and tolerate wearing them while they sleep and then increasing one hash mark each week approximately it could vary a little bit but trying to go up just the, that one little bit so just like a quarter of an inch in, increase in the the uh, stretching tension each week as tolerated so if at some point you tighten up the strap and you get this few more degrees here, but then all of a sudden it starts causing uh, issues like discomfort or pain, then you know, okay, we'll go back down to the one that you had it before. And by having these marks on here, you know exactly where, you're, um, where you had it before and what you might need to adjust to. If you need to go up from there to increase the tension or down from there to allow that foot to plantar flex just a little bit more to um, ensure that we're not pushing too hard and causing problems with sleep. So again, the goal is number one, to try to make sure that uh, these uh, kids can sleep and can tolerate wearing them, and then gradually just increase the stretching tension just a little bit at a time each time uh, you improve that, and that's gonna get better and better uh, dorsiflexion at the ankle, um, but it, you can't go too fast um, and too aggressive with it or they're gonna have a lot of problems and then they're gonna hate it and then it's not gonna work. So you can't just leave it where it is but you also can't be too aggressive and so this is the best way that i've found to try to find that where you can use these marks as a reference point to increase that stretching tension just a little bit at a time as long as it's being tolerated okay so just to show you how this goes on and then let's talk again about how we adjust it so first of all these uh, black buckles here which attach the stretch stretching straps are magnetic and so when you pull the red tab here it just quickly disconnects and to put it back together it kind of snaps right into place. Um, I did put hash marks on the straps here for you to use as a reference so I want to start with this first mark here just right there in be on the uh, edge of that little piece so you know where we're starting on both the straps okay and then the goal would be to try to get them comfortable to tolerate wearing it uh, once we get through the first week, if everything's going okay, then we want you to try to increase the tension. So by tightening up the strap just a little bit more, it's going to pull up on the foot just a few more degrees. So we want to pull that through till you get to the second mark there, and then you'll know we are um, stretching just a few more degrees. And we want you to do that once per week as long as he's tolerating it. But if at some point it becomes too much where he's not sleeping well or having any other issues with it, then you know, okay, I'll go back to where I was before 
and that will just reduce that tension a little bit and then hopefully help with those issues. And then we want you to wait maybe one or two more weeks and then try again. So just gradually, slowly and uh, cautiously, but always trying to get just a few more degrees of movement if possible. Put it on, we're gonna disconnect these uh, stretching straps. And we wanna make sure we get the foot properly seated all the way down in there to begin with. And so this part can just be pushed back out of the way, but we just wanna come behind the leg. So this one's for the right foot here. Just use both hands to open this up and kind of scoop that foot in. And then if we bend the knee, that's the best way to get these muscles to relax in order to get his heel all the way down to the bottom, which is important. And then I did put on this strap as well, a little mark there too. So you will see that when this goes through, we want this to be right to where you see that silver mark there, just like that. So that's good. This one comes across and then we're ready to attach these. And so this is gonna then pull up on that foot a little bit. And just like that. And just like that, and it does kind of snap right into place. So that's all set. And then the very last thing we can do, the sock is nice and long here, is just pull that down over the top, just like that. And there we go. These do have the tread on the bottom, so if he gets up during the night to go to the bathroom or anything like that, that should be fine as well. In my if you're interested in learning more about pediatric orthotic care and how to help children who are struggling with mobility, please check out our website, pediatricrehablab.com. I put together a course there, both for parents and for medical providers to help them be able to help kids who are struggling. If your child or your patient is already working with pediatric orthotics, then you know that they can either be an enormous help or a daily painful struggle. And so I wanna make sure that every parent and every medical provider has all of the information available in order to help their children the best way possible.